Hello and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. My name's Phil. Joining me as usual, I've got Rohan. Hey. How's it going? Good. Good, good. And joining us today, we have Liam from the UK. Good morning or good afternoon, Liam. How's it going? Hey, afternoon. Yeah, thank you guys for doing the, the crazy times. I'm happily at midday. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, right? Three time zones, we've made it work. That's right. That's right. It, it works out well. I think I think Europe is like, you know, I, th- I think when we get somebody from North America, it's a, for me, I, I feel better about myself because it's like, <laughs> hey, I'm not waking up and I'm not the only one waking up, right? But yeah. uh, but usually when we get people from Australia and I'm just like, oh, man, Phil's got a buddy there. And it's like, so halfway is really good. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have to Glad. triangulate it. Glad That's right. Help. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Home Assistant Cloud by Nabucasa. Easily and securely access your local Home Assistant instance remotely for a small monthly fee that also supports the Home Assistant project. The configuration is done by the user interface, so there's no fiddling with router settings, SSL certificates, or any YAML. All right, so Liam, this is our first episode of, I guess, since Home Assistant's changed their monthly release cycle, so we're sort of switching things up here at the podcast, and we're doing episodes just focus on guests, because generally, you know, we have all our guests come on and... We just we end up talking after the shows we finished recording for probably another hour with just our guests as well because there's so much yeah. we don't get to cram in. So now we get to cram a whole lot more in with you as our first guinea pig. So thank you very much for agreeing for that. <laughs> uh, so I guess let's just dive straight on in and let's start out how you started out using Home Assistant. Yeah, sure. Hey, so um, I guess I've always been kind of into tech. I've always kind of. Mm-hmm. And since, I guess, early 2010s, 10, 11, I sort of started to discover the whole home automation idea, like didn't really have any equipment, but was kind of getting into things like Tasker on my phone and um, right. Tasker then and just playing around with, with stuff. And I distinctly remember actually like we, my wife Sam and I went traveling in 2013 um, and I remember like being on a long distance bus in Argentina or like you know, traveling around and thinking like, ooh, when we get back and we get a place, like, what am I going to do? And I, I I don't, well, there wasn't a home assistant at that time, but I was kind of thinking about, oh, I could, um, how cool would it be if you could have it so your curtains, like, opened based on a light and kind of these ideas yeah. without any actual technical yeah. way of doing it. So it was all kind of in my mind. Um, and then 2014, I um, started um, with the company I'm with now and um, – I was on like a rotation scheme and in the first six months I was in a role and when I finished that six months the team it's really sweet actually they got me a present I was like what is this and I opened it up and it was a Lifex bulb oh, I was like that's that nice. oh, what? I was like that is the coolest leaving present ever because that was yeah what seven years ago so they were only just out really they're massive bulbs yeah like yep, hardly yep. fits in any lamp <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ways a ton but I was super excited about that and then over the next few years it was kind of again we were renting so it was like I had that and would just change colors from my phone and kind of used a bit of if this then that with it tasker kind of stuff and then got an echo a couple of years later again used I had one light so used the echo to turn one light on (laughs) yeah and off not super useful um and I guess it all kicked off so we bought our first house in 2017 so it's a kind of four bed house gardens are suddenly like all the opportunities open up and you're allowed to like drill holes and stuff. Um, (laughs) Exactly. The dream. And it all went wrong. So the the first year was spending money on like stuff in the house, floors and curtains and boring stuff. And then um, had my first son in the start of 2018. And he, so there's a new thing in the UK where you can go on shared parental leave. And it came in about five years ago um so i basically had seven months off like we both had seven months off each oh wow um, oh that's with, nice with our baby like overlapping so it was really cool yeah um and and it kind of gave me a bit of time there were times in the morning where like i'd have the baby in the sling and he'd have to do an hour nap my wife would sleep for a bit because she'd been up in the night sure um yeah. and then you kind of got an hour where it's quiet and you're like oh what shall i do so i had a raspberry pi that I'd bought years ago and never really done anything with. So I sort of had discovered Home Assistant by then on reading blogs and stuff. Chucked it on and got the bulb in. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of step one. <laughs> and then kind of built it out from there. So I had like six months at home and, um, yeah, kind of built up the equipment, um, built up 
and it kind of doesn't stop does it it's kind of i don't think it will ever stop because <laughs> yeah. your, your needs constantly evolve and, um, and there's always something new around the corner yeah and a constant to-do it. list is fun and and several thousand dollars later it's uh or i get pounds <laughs> which yeah, is worse <laughs> you I, guys have your dollar or your pound is worth way more so I, I would not like to calculate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's 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 like figuring out how much rent you've paid through the years, right? It's just like, oh god, if I if you realize that, it's like you could have bought two houses over. Yeah, so I saw a thing saying you can download from Amazon like an Excel file or CSV file of all your purchases, and I was like, yeah, I'm, don't ne- do that. I'm never going to do that. <laughs> it's such a bad. That's, that's, nope. I just that's, don't want to go near that. Yeah, that that that's how depression starts to set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, so it's kind of built built from there, really. I guess it's really evolved then with having kids. It's been so useful. So yeah, as their kind of nap times evolve, and and also going through, I find different stages of the UK weather. Like in summer, you kind of we've got AC set up, and you kind of think about whether windows are open, and you know you kind of build up all that stuff. And then you get to winter yeah. and you kind of work more on your heating and <laughs> and you kind of have these cycles each year where you kind of focus on different different parts of the house. Yeah. Interesting. So so you've gone through two of those cycles now? You said we started. Yeah, around so two right? yeah, exactly. Two two years pretty much. Okay. So how how is that kind of like do you find that those kind of core routines and stuff you've polished down? Like what's the yeah, a lot of it. Like I think so like thinking about the kids' rooms, um, there's quite a lot of stuff going on in there. So like they've got um hue light bulbs, um, which will and then like a Xiaomi button which you can um kind of you can press it once and it'll come on to like one percent red. So mm-hmm. it's as dim as it'll go. So the idea is like you need a little bit of light when you go in because they've woken up, but you don't want to really wake them up. So you hit that yeah. button. Mm-hmm. And then you can like double tap it and it goes up a little bit. So if you're kind of changing a nappy, you're like, there's a button on the nappy table, you hit a double tap and the light just fades up a little bit more okay. and then you hit it again and it goes back down. So you could, so that's become really like, just like, we find it really hard if we go on holiday and you kind of don't have that. Like we yeah. actually take, <laughs> taken the life X bulb with us a few times and tried to like emulate <laughs> it on holiday. <laughs> Um, yeah yeah so some of that stuff just kind of runs now we've got some some kind of motion sensors in and around like the hallway has a motion sensor and that just just kind of gets on with it and it's been in place for kind of 18 months and other stuff's yeah like still still evolving all the time. okay that xiaomi button is it a wireless button or is it wired in no it's so it's a xiaomi um zigbee xiaomi akara zigbee button mm. so and then i've got a combi stick um because i have the the wireless ones and i can't get the double tap oh. like, i don't know if the double tap is supported like so it's complete like these are the battery operated switches so i don't know if they're the same as yours but yeah 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 All so I have just like a little a... coin coin back yeah yeah, yeah yeah that work that seems to work for me through oh, combi oh, maybe i'll on this maybe i need a firmware update on them or something but i had the same thing right so uh i would have uh just one of the buttons in on the change table, right? And the idea being that when we change the nappy, you would tap it and it would go into Grossy and mark mm. off that we had, you know, use some baby wipes, use a nappy. That way we could track, you know, because if we're down at the supermarket, I don't want to be like, oh, should I buy some nappies or not, right? Yeah. And, but now with Grossy, I can have it. All right. I know how many nappies are in stock and, and all that. Of course, that didn't last very long. We sort of got <laughs> over with the amount of nappies that were changing. It's sort of, all right, yeah, we're just going to, we're not going to bother tracking them anymore. Yeah. I've I've heard a lot of people with especially with things like nappies and like like whatever diapers whatever you want to call them. Mm. It's uh, a lot of people are doing like just subscription, right? Whether it's through Amazon yeah. or whether they're grocery store or whatever. It's like, hey, you know what? Every like thirty days, drop me whatever, like one one box, two boxes. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know how. You clearly you can tell. Yeah. I don't have something, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but you know, every set amount of days, drop me off whatever. Do you, do you guys do anything like that right now? We did for a while because on Amazon in the UK, at least the whole subscribe and save thing, you get yeah quite yeah, a discount. So you can get like twenty percent off if you do enough different items but we found i was like i'm gonna subscribe to five different things so i get the discount and then you end up with like a thousand wipes and (laughs) 50 boxes of tea (laughs) and you're like well i've saved 20 percent, but my garage (laughs) yeah 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 and also the nap they change size every couple of months you're like oh they've sent me the small size now so we've kind of just gone manual now 
Um, Got it. I do like the sound of grossy though. I was listening to you, Phil. I don't know if it was the last episode or the one before talking about grossy mm. and I kind of can see the, the, the chores stuff looks really cool. Um, I think is it Isabella? Um, yes. Had yes. On? She's done a, there's a Lovelace card and there's yeah, a custom she's gone component. Nuts with grossy. She yeah. loves it. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. There's like um, a nice card that just shows you what chores need to be done when they were last done. And then you hit track and it can just dynamically say it's due mm -hmm. in 10 days from now. And I'm thinking like you can set up notifications. I have, it's on the list, but it, um, it looks really, yeah. really useful. How big is your to-do list? Mm, I actually made a note of some of the stuff. Yeah, pretty long. I have a constant Google Keep, <laughs> Google Keep list, a checklist of stuff. And it's yeah. really yeah. long. Um, and there's stuff on there that's boring as well that you never get to like um well i say it's boring like the raspberry pi i run it on a raspberry pi 4 and i think there was something saying you should switch to 64 bit now instead of 32 um mm -hmm. and i'm like oh it's gonna be i need to take the sd card out mm, it's one yeah. of those things that like won't rip doesn't add a feature so i like just keep knocking it down the list because other <laughs> things come in um so there's yep. a few bits and pieces like that um that I need to do uh, but yeah it's pretty 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 long yeah it's it's I, again some something it, it's interesting right because something like grocery it's it's I think they call it it's a ERP for your home or whatever yeah and uh which which is a very interesting way of thinking about it right? it <laughs> yeah. is because it, it's kind of like okay you know it is here's my to do here's my stuff I need to buy here's my you know <laughs> whatever right it's like it's like running Salesforce in your house right yeah. and uh or, or some something like that right and you know, it, it is it is kind of cool, right? And you can build some automations around that. You can do, you know, if you start running out of, I don't know, bread, you get an alert going, hey, man, you got to go buy bread. Like, go do this, right? Like, it's... I really love the expiry date, like, tracking. Mm -hmm. Like, so, like, mm -hmm. a carton of milk, right? Like, a carton of milk's going off. Like, in two days, it'll be like, hey, you need to get some more milk, right? Like, or whatever. Yeah. See, see, I feel like when I come in from the grocery store, I won't do that, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it's just a... Yeah furious shove it in the fridge and then you're done dealing with <laughs> um, yeah that's my feel is like whether we would actually do that properly i think the one thing yeah we'd quite like to do it on is um things that you can things that are super predictable so like dog food for example yes if you were like right my right. sack of dog food lasts like 30 days then yeah. you literally just every day have an automation taking one like portion off or whatever yeah. and then after 25 days so then you don't have to do anything because i'm kind of like if i have to enter something into grocery or even press a button and then it's not just me right everyone in the house has to do that mm -hmm. yeah i'm kind of like i feel like it would just fall over fairly quickly but i think for stuff like yeah dog food cat litter maybe even nappies because they're kind of predictable right especially after the early days mm -hmm. you, know, you can pretty much guess how many you're going to use i feel like it would be quite useful yeah, yeah. And anything that you can like get this audit, like an automation to trigger it. So, if, like, I have a dishwashing tablet, right? So, as soon as the dishwasher mm. runs, it marks one off in grocery. Once the washing machine goes off, it marks a certain amount of uh, washing powders being used and all that. Yeah, I like that. That's um, following your blog and getting that set up is on my list, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, what are some of your favorite automations that you've you've done in your house? Yeah, so I guess I'm pretty proud of the whole uh, climate stuff in um my kids rooms um so it's pretty full on like there's an for summer there's an ac um that we've got there's mm -hmm. a radio we've got evo home um so mm -hmm. individual like radiator valves there's a humidifier um there's like a sensor on the window and the door whether it's open so it's kind of like the most monitored room so you can set in yeah. home assistant like what humidity range you want what temperature range um and then it all plays off so in summer if you have a cold night um the heating might come on but if the ac comes on it switches the heating off so that's all kind of integrated mm. quite nicely like if if yeah. um, babies have a cold then we can turn the humidifier range up um so it makes the room more humid which kind of helps them breathe more um so it's really right. like easy and then you can go in on the app it's not really an automation but you can go in and see like the temperature as a chart as well which is so nice to be able to kind of say oh look the temperature's rising and then there's loads of little automations around that like the rooms warm up or cool down um based on when nap times are which are kind of like a dynamic right. thing we can enter then we have whether they're at nursery is kind of in a google calendar so then it can say well it is nap time but they're at nursery so i'm not gonna 
put that on. Yep. And then even if we're out, so in summer, if we're out at lunchtime, which kind of never happens now with COVID, but <laughs> we yeah. used to be, we get a little notification saying, um, I can see you're out. Um, do you want me to cool down the room for lunch nap or are you going to do it out? Because we might do it in the pram or the sling. So then I'll say, if I don't say anything, then it, I um, can't remember how it defaults, but basically it won't just cool the room down unnecessarily if, if we're out. So it kind of uses the um, occupancy interesting kind of thing. so that's quite a well built up system um and it's got some safety features as well so we had it's not like an ac that's built into the wall it's just like a standalone unit with a hose pipe that goes out the window right um right. so if, if the window's not open using the xiaomi like door window sensor if the window's not open then the ac won't come on like what if you try and toggle it on it just switches it back off because it's and, it, and yeah. you get a notification saying you're trying to turn the ac on but the window's not open so you can't do that because if you switch it on with the hose in it just right. like heats the room up and feels kind of dangerous does, um, does happen, <laughs> yeah. so yeah that's kind of like lot actually lots of of automations it's a massive like yaml mm. package file um i'd love to share it actually as a blueprint or something but i'm kind of like there's just so much in there and I think yeah. you mentioned like I wish we could have packages on there because it would be a really cool thing to share as like a full system mm -hmm. yeah um, exactly. but it's but yeah I feel like hopefully that's coming and I can share it properly I mean I think even still it'll be a cool blueprint right I mean because so you got a couple of main elements there right so you've got like your thermostat for your heater you've got uh, the AC you've got your window sensor you got your phone and basically mm. I think based on that you can make a pretty decent blueprint that might actually be pretty useful for you know some other folks with young children and, and exactly that kind of setup in the in their room mm, right yeah definitely so mm. so the humidifiers liam are they like smart humidifiers that have an app that you can control through home assistant or how you how did you hook them up so they're just no so they're dumb humidifiers from they're like 20 25 pounds don't know mm -hmm. what that is dollars um forty dollars or something from amazon um mm -hmm. And then they just plug in through a Toya smart switch. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you yep. just switch it on and it'll literally just um, come on and off when the power goes to it. Um, nice. And then it's got a Xiaomi temperature humidity sensor that provides yep. the kind of humidity levels. So then, and then in Home Assistant, there's a couple of input numbers. So there's like a min and a max humidity. Okay. Um, and you just set that and it just keeps it within that range. And then there's a few things like if the door gets left open for more than a couple of minutes it cuts the humidity fire off because there's no need for it to no be point. on. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's a few bits around it. But. That's really cool. And, yeah. The notifications that you get, what are you using to receive? Is it like, is it a, a home assistant app notification or have you got like telegram or anything set up? Yeah. I, it was telegram for quite a long time. And I had a lot of the telegram, like callbacks, actionable notifications. Yeah. Um, but I switched probably when, when the, I think it was when the Home Assistant Android app came out. Mm -hmm. I switched. Um, I've actually switched myself from Android to iOS now. But yeah, so what was that? A few months ago, Bless. I kind of switched over just because it, <laughs> it, um, yeah, we can we can go there if you want. <laughs> 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 it, um, yeah, it was just a more. It's just a nice experience, right, for it all to be in one place and it to say it's coming from Home Assistant rather than it's coming from Telegram. Yeah, exactly. um, and it felt like the feature parity for what I use was pretty much equal with the actual notifications and stuff. So I'm guessing that's like a, a smart notification that you would just get with like an action, you know, uh, when you read the notification, there'll be an action, you know, yes, do this, no, or just swipe it away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I try and like go think about the UX. So I'm kind of like, if I ignore it, yeah. um, it probably mean you know, what should be the default state? What would I want that to be? What's the most common kind of thing? So yeah 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 um yeah so that's that's a, a good one um i guess there's a couple of other kind of kid-based things so there's one this is almost like it's almost an automation but um it's more of like a really hacky integration um <laughs> so right. we we um and um, jesse my youngest was like learning to sleep on his front where they tend to sleep a lot better a few months ago um but it, there's like a couple of months where they can turn over, but you're kind of like, oh, if they're on their front, is it a bit dangerous? And we kind of wanted the peace of mind mm, yeah. of that kind of being safe. And and there's this um, there's this thing called the Owl Smart Sock. Um, it actually used to be yes. integrated. It used to have an API, but I think they pulled it a while back. Um, but we managed to pick one up from a, a like reviewer who had one, 
so they were selling it brand new for half price because they're pretty pricey so we managed to pick one up and it basically pumps heart rate and blood oxygen levels into an app that you can you can then check out but okay we kind of wanted to like the notifications aren't that straightforward through it like they um you can't customize some of it and it's it's just a bit more um i don't know it just didn't seem to offer the quite the functionality we wanted so but there wasn't an api so and this is super hacky i got an old android phone and put tasker on it um and the tasker basically goes into the owl app um every uh, 30 seconds <laughs> yeah <laughs> during like nap time <laughs> It does like a screen. You can you can do this UI query right. like functionality that pulls the, the values. And then using the Home Assistant. So on the new Home Assistant Android app, it's great. There's like a last notification sensor. Okay. Which uh, you can yes. say, what is the last notification to hit the phone? And it gives you the text and the title. So I kind of configured the phone. So the only notifications that come in are outlet notifications. And then it pulls that into Home Assistant. And then there's some like template wizardry that I found on the forums that kind of extracts the values that I need. So yeah. then I've got Jesse's heart rate and Jesse's oxygen level in Home Assistant as a sensor value. Um, and so then it's cool because you can see charts over time. Yeah. And yeah. I get notifications. So now we're sat watching TV and I'll get a notification through um, Google Home or through that we've got web os tv lg so it'll do a little yeah. notification it just says jesse's yeah. heart rate has dropped below nine or jesse's oxygen has dropped below 92 and it's weird it quite often then he'll suddenly wake up we haven't quite got to the point where we come in and kind of do anything but it's kind of a useful information that's for it to like ping through so that's been nice yeah Although i kind of wonder how long that android it's a nexus 5x like fairly old phone so i don't know how long it's going to last with the screen being on like yeah. 18 hours a day or something that's, I, <laughs> right. I don't know I, I, if, if i saw that my kids blood uh like blood oxygen level is too low or whatever i'd probably start freaking out <laughs> yeah. like it's... well you just we just like open the app or open the baby monitor and you kind of watch him and make the call whether you go in but it's kind of nice to have the information like flowing mm -hmm. through um, so yeah that's a good one you can easily put that into like grafana and, and chart it over time as well right well i figured that because i, I wouldn't you know, based on that, you can get information about when they woke up because you can actually yeah. see it says, are they in deep light, deep sleep, light sleep or awake? So yeah. I'm kind of like, if you could pull in their temperature, like the room temperature, the humidity, the time, I bet like some of the data science, you know, the Jupyter notebook, data, you feel like there yeah, must yeah, be yeah. some wizardry you, you could do to be like, what's causing them to wake up and how could you yeah. kind of then have Home Assistant like avoid that happening? That would be amazing. But not quite at that point yet <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny that's cool that is that see to me that's like a really good use case of you know hey here's life right and then here's how i'm gonna make sure life is more comfortable for in this case for your for your baby right so yeah well and us if he's comfortable we're comfortable <laughs> that's that, well that's it right <laughs> if that's he's asleep you're asleep <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny exactly. so you you mentioned you mentioned you had an Amazon Echo. Um, is that is that primarily how you interact with Home Assistant or the phones? Like like what do you what do you? Yeah, so I started off with the Echoes um, and had like a few of them dotted around the house and a little Echo Show yeah. that I got free with a Ring doorbell when Amazon just like you know they just give this stuff away right. I think they want us all <laughs> in their system exactly. So that was that was good. I actually switched through a few things from this podcast, actually, and then just some other reasons I switched to Google Home um, about two or three months ago at Black Friday because they were kind of all reduced um, for a few reasons. Like they, the casting is really useful. So with the whole Home Assistant media browser stuff, it yes, you know, yeah. integrates so nicely to Google Home. You can just cast to any device, play, a, play an audio file. And then you can also cast to the, the screen kind of the Nest hubs they have. You can cast Home Assistant UI, like a Lovelace UI, and actually interact with it. So it just As opposed to having to open up like the Silk browser in or Firefox on the Echo Show that doesn't yeah. work because you can't store like favorites or something properly. And then you're trying to use this tiny little touch screen. And it, it's, just, it's, yeah. it's a pretty bad experience overall. Yeah. It's yeah. just not something you do. Um, no. But equally, Google's home, Google Home isn't perfect. Like there's stuff that Alexa, oh, not allowed to say it, Echo can do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So 
All the people who have echo as their wake word must be really annoyed by this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> exactly I, I think, right. I think if, they listen to them, if, if they listen to this podcast and they still have echo as a, as a wake word there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. They deserve it's, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not perfect. The one thing that I find really used to find really useful on the echo is you can um, trigger a routine based on a sense of value. So you could have like an input Boolean in home assistant that would then trigger an Alexa routine, which obviously can do some of the, some stuff that home assistant mm, yes. can't necessarily do, which the, you can't do that in Google home. You can have routines, but it can only be triggered by like time um, or something. So right. I've actually, I'm create the reason I wanted to do it. I'm creating a um, little jukebox for my, for my kids. So it was okay. inspired by Paulus's kind of um, NFC cards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I've done, I can uh, I need to do a post on Reddit or something. 3D printed this That's device. That's cool. Okay. So what? It, so it's got a, a Nest Mini in the top. Um, I mean, I could have used a Raspberry Pi and a speaker and stuff, but I was like, I'm just going to go as easy as possible here. So it's got a yeah. Nest Mini Mini in the top. It's got a space for a Hue dimmer switch, which is okay. going to control like volume, and then it's got a space for one of the you know Andrea Dono's tag readers i don't know if you saw yeah yeah Yeah. so i bought a couple of them um and then the idea is that and then the cards can slot into slots down the side so then these nfc cards so he can come in tap the reader and then it'll play um a song so it i've got it set up to do local media from home assistant so it'll do um yeah record we've recorded like some stories um got grandparents to record stories oh that's really nice so you can do a story, but it can also play a Spotify playlist yep. or, or song. So it can play yeah. like Disney songs or something. Um, uh, or it can play videos through local media. Um, so it can do quite a lot. And then I've also managed to get it doing Netflix through another kind of tasker hat. So it um, <laughs> he's it can say, he can tag for a Netflix show of some kind of like play Paw mm-hmm. Patrol or something. And it goes to my same phone that does the owl up. Um, Oh. And that opens up and it does a, um, it basically opens the Google Assistant on the phone and then types into the box, play Paw Patrol on Netflix on the TV, sends that command from the phone. And then the TV in the front room where this is kind of opens up and starts playing through the Chromecast. Um, Interesting. And Netflix. So it's like a multiple media kind of thing with Home, which just shows like the power of Home Assistant really that it is coordinating yeah, yeah. all these different things. Um, it's interesting because so, yeah. I actually got my tag readers this week in the mail. Mm. And it, even before my daughter was born, I'd been planning to do exactly this, right? Like um, get some NFC tags printed with, you know, movies um, or songs or anything. Yeah. And have those tag readers around, you know, like on the living room TV, she can walk up. And just yeah. tap, you know, like Frozen or Paw Patrol or whatever she wants to play. Yeah. yeah. I've already got um, my LG TV hooked up. So, I've got a script in Home Assistant so that uh, it'll turn the LG TV on. It'll open up the Plex app through LG WebOS. And then from the Plex component, I can then tell it to play a movie or whatever. But inter- I haven't been able to crack Netflix. That's the one I want to crack, right? Because I know on LG, you can't just control Netflix, right? You can't just tell Netflix to play something. Yeah. On you need the, the Chromecast component, so yeah, I, I do like using a phone for that as a way around it. Well, I know, I and know, you, with things like Amazon Echo, you can say, you know, like play whatever on Netflix, right? Play Friends on Netflix, and boom, it'll pick up where you left off, and, and really, whatever. Or even Netflix do you on Fire TV oh, on the Fire TV. Yeah, no, no, oh, Netflix, but uh, with, with a Fire TV. Um, I, I, I don't know if it works with. Again, I don't I don't know what else it needs in that ecosystem um, with the Fire TV, obviously, because they can control that, right? Yeah. Well, that might be. I mean, they're they're not too expensive. They're I mean, you can pick up a 4K for like what sixty bucks, mm-hmm. right? And I, and I think they did a hardware rev on the uh, on the just a not not 4K because a 1080P variant too, right? On which is apparently yeah. a little bit more powerful than it was before. So you know that might be an option there as well, right? So then that way, because if you can say play whatever on Netflix and it picks it up, I'm sure you can just create a routine around that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was tempted to get a Fire TV actually because we've got a ring doorbell and some Blink cameras. Yeah. And it would be nice. I think that's the easiest way to get those coming onto the TV. It's so hard, isn't it? Like you try and choose an ecosystem and then you're like, oh, but I've got a ring. 
Like I do, yeah. I've got like this vision of like five years maybe from now where yeah. you just got rid of all of that and you're using like Mycroft or Ada or Almond or whatever. And yeah. you know, you, it's all working really nicely. And But it just feels like we're too soon, right? For it's... <laughs> all of that stuff to work nicely. Yeah. And, and you know, I think just to to get that going at home too, I think it's just like, okay, there's, there's a lot of effort. Yeah. You know, involved, right? And like, I think I think on one of the one of the episodes, I think it was the last episode I mentioned, you know, one of the something I'm looking at is doing things like facial recognition and doing a lot of that stuff, right? With Deep Stack. And, you know, again, work started up, so <laughs> as as I <laughs> accurately predicted, it's still be done maybe in like two years, right? Like that's the thing. It's just you're like, oh, what's the and what's the return on it? You're like, oh, if I was to switch to that, it would be cool having local, but it just seems such hard work. I read a lot of blogs because exactly. I was like I was like, if I switch to like a Raspberry Pi or something with a microphone and a speaker instead of an Alexa or Google Home. Fine, you could do some of the voice control seems okay, but then you, I use it for multi-room audio and music mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, then there's like Snapcast and Mopedy and all that stuff. Yeah. But then you start to just be like, oh, this is just going to take too long. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are also things that you have to maintain, right? Like if they break one day, then you have to go in and, all right, what's wrong with it? Yeah, yeah. As opposed and to you know, like the Amazon Echo or Sonos, the, you know, it's it's their problem to fix, not yours. And already, yeah. it's crazy, isn't it, when stuff fails? Like I realize how much we rely on this now because mm-hmm. you know you go in in the night and it's amazing. We're all, I'm always really smug when it works. Like I'm yeah. like oh, <laughs> I go in, I go into my baby and I can press this button and the lights really dim and like you know other people without smart homes are dealing with. I'm sure they're fine, yeah. but <laughs> I yeah. assume it's real. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, the humidifier's coming on, the aircon's coming on nicely, especially when it's hot and people are like, oh my god, my baby can't sleep; it's so hot. Um, yeah, and we're like, oh, it's all just set up and works really nicely. But then the minute it doesn't work, and you go in and you press the button in the night because they need an nappy change, and nothing happens. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, and then you have to go. I've had to go at like 3 a.m. before and be like, right, I'm just gonna unplug the Raspberry Pi and plug it back in hope that fixes it don't yeah. know what's going on so it does kind of add so much value but it kind of builds your your bar doesn't it of expectation mm-hmm. up so you're like you you just come to expect all the good stuff and mm-hmm. then when it fails you're really annoyed and you're like yeah but you know no one else has this but then at the same time <laughs> well that's your it. expectations get high it's like what you said before when like you don't have like when i my wife and I, we've been to the in-laws, right? And we've just come to a custom to walk into a room and the light's turning on and it doesn't <laughs> happen, right? You're like, oh yeah, we have to turn the lights on around here, right? Yeah. And yeah. Even like I was looking at a brochure, there was some a new set of um, townhouses going up around in the neighborhood and they one of their selling features was, you know, smart lighting. And I was like, all right, I better take a look, all right? Now you've got me interested. So I took a look at the brochure and it was, you know, like basically, you know, their their flux or whatever it's called, you know, yeah, yeah, lighting, right? But it still wasn't, you know, there was no Zigbee or Z-Wave or anything smart about it. It was literally that was their selling point. So it wasn't smart enough for me. And then I was like, well, mm. why, if I was going to buy this house, why would I pay extra for their version of smart? It's probably going to be locked into an ecosystem that I then can't, yeah. you know, maintain myself and, and do what I want to with it, right? It's so kind of important now when I buy stuff how it integrates like pretty much any tech you buy or anything yeah, you buy for absolutely. the house that's pretty much the first thing now is well does it integrate could i integrate it yeah and and you know t- to me that 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 is a that's a good approach to take right like sometimes you know people are like well look at look at the life i live when when that's the consideration i have to make but you know for me it's also the more people that do that it's also okay great now manufacturers vendors whatever are going to realize that too right and you're going to have more things like open apis and things like that which is mm. you know and and paulus has talked about it a few times as well right in terms of you know we're really trying to home assistant as as a community and and as an organization is trying to push vendors to do that right i mean mm. it's it's good for everybody right where you have local control and where you have apis to say hey, let's do this, right? Like, let's actually keep it open and let's actually build something that works and people will buy your products. For sure. Right? I mean, I think at least once a week, I'm messaging Phil going, I hate my MyQ um, <laughs> door, garage door, right? Um, I, have a, I have a Chamberlain MyQ garage door. And to your point, like, it's like when something doesn't work, it's just, you know, it, it's the, the world is ending, right? And uh, 
And it's like, so when I, when my garage door doesn't open automatically or whatever, like based on whatever, it's, it's the most frustrating thing, right? And to me, it's, I'm almost at the point of ripping out the, like, I'm not going to rip out the, the door opener because it still, it still works, but rip out their, uh, whatever and put my own, uh, mm. like either a like Zigbee, ESP. yeah, is ESP home or a Zigbee based something or, you know, doing that. Right. And it's just like, and you know, I seeing it on Facebook, seeing it on GitHub and everybody is just like, this is so frustrating because yeah, like yeah. once a week it's dying or actually right now it's just like, you know, depending, depending on the day, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's just, <laughs> you know, you're rolling the dice, right? Because just because they're trying to change stuff on the back end so that people can't use the APIs. Yeah. Right. And, and maybe, maybe I'm, you know, mistaken there, but that, that, that's what it sounds like. Even if you look at all the GitHub issues and you're seeing what they're fixing, they're like, oh, we're just randomizing the, you know, uh, the browser now, or we're randomizing, you know, the user agent string to say I'm coming from blah, 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 because they're filtering now. And it's like, uh, is that, is that really the best use of the company's productivity? Mm-hmm. Right. And I guess it's all in the name of security, to. right? Like the TP link yeah. stuff was all, oh, it's security. And you kind of think, well, there needs to be a balance found between how do you yeah. do security whilst also looking after your users and well, and what that's they want. <clears throat> and, and to some extent, you know, how much do I trust your security? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm at the barrier to entry for ESP home and that sort of stuff is getting so low as well. Like, yeah, with ESP home and with like, I, I kind of want to do the garage door thing. I, we've got an, um, an electric like motorized door that I put in, yeah. um, which I was so excited about, but it's, we, we've lost the key fob. <sighs> so now, now if I need to get the bikes oh, no. out, I have to come into the house, <laughs> into the garage through the inside door, I press the button to open the garage, yeah. get the bikes out. And then I have to come back in, close the door with the button and then come back through the house and out the front door. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to get that done this summer. I think when we're doing a bit more bike riding and stuff, yeah, but I think yeah, I'm going to yeah. go ESP because it just seems it's just, you know, it's getting easier and easier. Like there's always so many blog posts and mm. it's so cheap and, well, yeah, and and chances are people have, and and I know for the garage door, I've seen a bunch of people do it already, right? And and mm. you know, it's all out there. It's all in you know whatever GitHub thing. But the most obscure things, again, I was talking about my kettle, right, uh, which has a BLE in it to turn it on, and you can set the temperature and stuff. Somebody's already, or actually, a few people have already got ESP thirty two code or uh, ESP Home uh, configs to say, hey, go turn it on, or here's, you know, here's how you read the BLE, whatever. And then based on that, I brought it into Home Assistant as a climate thing. And now I can just say to my Echo, just nice. turn on the kettle, whatever. And 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 it works, right? It works really well. And I, I think my effort was plugging in the, <laughs> the ESP32 and pressing the button so it programs and off you go, <laughs> right? And just, it just kind of works. And that's that's the kind of you know that that's that's where it's going right and that that's where it's gotten yeah. to already not even going right and uh i think i think there's a lot of stuff there's a ton of value there so yeah i totally see that the barrier of entry is next to nothing for that at this point to me right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. rowan the the deep stack thing i heard you talking a couple of weeks ago about the the facial yeah. recognition the van do you have you come across much around object recognition? Because I've got a use case where we've got a parasol in the garden that like folds yeah. down, and basically we had an issue last summer where we left it up because you just forget to put it back down, and then it was a windy night, and oh, it just no. like snapped off and broke, and then that's story, like story of my life, man. It's it's I've <laughs> got, I've had like the I've had umbrellas fly off of my uh, table and like go, go <laughs> like through half of my backyard yeah, and, you, know, you got me or the girlfriend running after it be like no, no, no. <laughs> and if it doesn't break anything it, or anyone it'll cost you like 150 yeah. pounds to replace and you're like damn it yeah they're not cheap either <clears throat> so i had an idea like we, we've got a blink camera on the back um yeah that just uh, can snapshot the kind of garden and it's perfectly in view of it and there's a component to pull photos from that and I was thinking, like, it's always in the same place, this parasol. So you, you could probably draw a box. And what I'd quite like to say, so I've set up a notification home system where it's like, if it's a windy night, so using like a dark sky, mm-hmm. well, dark sky for now, dark sky forecast, um, it says, right, if the wind speed is above X, send me a notification at like 9 p.m. saying, hey, it's going to be windy tonight. If the parasol's out, 
get it in or fold it down. Mm. Yeah. But, but the problem is that's going to go off every night that it's windy and it might be down. Yeah. So what I was thinking, like if I could take a blink snapshot and could it recognize the parasols open or the parasols down? Cause that's probably quite a consistent object, you know, to be looking at for it to train. But obviously yeah. no one talks about that. Everyone talks about facial recognition, number play. Surely you could do like a comparison of like, you know, in a certain pixel, you know, what color it is, right? Like if it's down, you're going to yeah. be seeing through it. And then if it's up, it would be the color of the sail, right? So yeah, surely. Yeah, exactly. That would be it feels doable, right? It's just, it's just yeah. connecting. Well, it, I just knowing what the tech is to do it, I guess. It's, I, I think, I think, and, and uh, Robin would be the better person to ask for this, but. You know, I think I think it should be able to do that because it does. So DeepStack also has object recognition, right? Where, again, it might be training it. So you feed it, you know, the last 20, 40, whatever snapshots that you have of the um, uh, of it open or of it closed. Right. And then and then based on that, you can say, hey, this is it open. This is it closed. And, and yeah, it would just always label. recognize. Right. And cool. sure. The only thing is you'll be feeding it, you know, the same picture for however long yeah but if you don't care or whatever who That's cares fine, right? yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then based on that you can have it, it'll be it might come in as detected open detected like ob, the object might be open the object might be closed right? and and whatever you can infer whatever it might not be the most perfect and again i'm i'm very new to this still so i'm still learning how how it works or, and i haven't played with the object detection stuff but yeah. it should be fairly simple um and I know TensorFlow should be able to do something like that too. Actually, TensorFlow actually has some really interesting. I don't remember if I was talking about this online or offline. Phil, I was telling you. So when I was I was telling my uh, my counterpart uh, that that you know I was playing with DeepStack and whatever, and he's like, "Oh, check this out." And he, he's huge into fitness and such. And uh, basically, somebody built a thing in TensorFlow. It's a little app using TensorFlow uh, Lite where basically it's a virtual gym trainer, right? So it's like, okay, push up. And it'll be like, hey, you know, your elbows are too, If let's say you're doing Whoa. push ups, your elbows are too far out or bring them in and like mm, things like that, right? That's cool. Yeah. And basically what it, what that uses, I, I forget what the actual term is, but essentially it's tracking the state of your arms, right? Um, and same way you might be able to track the the movement of the of the umbrella and based on that if it's all the way down then it, it i i don't see it being any different than you standing there with your hands down let's say you're doing a jumping jack sure. right your hands yeah. down and then your your <laughs> hands are up right what like as as you make that movement right so that may be something in, again in terms of how complex is this to build that's something i i couldn't tell you that well, Right, it's exactly. a really hard one, this, because I'm like, wow, this could take a lot of my life, and I'll end up with a thing that basically I can already get the wind notifications. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it is it, how much is it worth it? But I guess it's more the satisfaction of doing it, isn't it? As well, and all you things. really need though <laughs> is a binary sensor. Is it open or closed? Could you mm. just attach like a Xiaomi door window sensor so that when it's in its open position, mm. those two contacts, you know, are touching. I know they, yeah, it, as long as it's not metallic. How how weatherproof is, are they though? Yeah, that was what it would depend on. But then if I put it under the under the parasol, I guess it would be protected from the rain. Maybe. Yeah. Um, well, you can even yeah. just have a little. You can like it's DIY true. yourself a little contact sensor with, uh, or like, a, or even a reed switch, right, or a limit switch. Sorry. Just yeah, to, like when it comes down, it, it hits it, right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, again, the reason I'm doing it is it's like, hey, this is something different and it's something to occupy the time and something That's interesting thing, to yeah. learn. Yeah. Um, mm. But uh, but yeah, if if you don't have the time, then I, I don't suggest <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I'll see how I get to. Yeah, but uh, my plan, my plan first is to do ready for the summer is the garden, like irrigation. I want to put in. Um, uh, that'd be like, awesome. Yeah, I found. I thought it was really so. I went on holiday to South Africa just before COVID hit, thankfully. Um, yeah. And loads of people there had the under lawn sprinklers, you know, where yeah. they just pop up. Yep. Um, yep. And, I, and here, people don't really have them that much. And I assume they're really expensive, but I found a place that does it um, online in the UK and they don't seem crazy expensive. So I'm thinking we've already got like a feed to the raised kind of flower beds and then a mm -hmm. feed to the pots, you know, like a drip pot irrigation yeah. thing so then i want to do 
um, pop-up sprinklers in the lawn and then we've got a front lawn. So I'm going to run like a hose around the side of the house to the front. Yeah. And then I kind of, and then I want to set up, you know, properly like some solenoid valves and have it all running. That would be really, I'm quite excited about doing that. Um, cause I yeah. need pop-ups cause we've got a robot lawnmower as well. Um, Oh, oh, you've I'm actually so got one. Jealous. Oh. Uh, yeah, I just kind of, I was like, I think I'm going to buy this. And my wife was like, oh, uh, like, okay. And I was like, I'll take that as confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, bye. I heard yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is great. But equally, it drives over the sprinkler hose, so it needs yeah. to be hidden. Um, I actually did a fun thing with that. Um, so that it, I would highly recommend. Like, it's so, I mean, it's, it's so, so lazy. But that's yeah. what this is all about, right? Um, mm-hmm. It mows the lawn. But you, uh, the the most useless thing I've ever bought in home automation is a smart cat flap, and it's like this sure flap <laughs> cat flap, and it um, senses their mic like the microchip of our two cats and says like, right, Layla is outside, or Layla. Yeah, so you yeah, basically yeah. get a you get like a person sensor in Home Assistant, or like a device tracker that's like Layla is inside yeah. or outside, Mia is inside which is just pointless information generally. Um, I, I, I had thought, because uh, it's a custom component, I thought, oh, I need it because we're going to lock them in when we go out and let them out when I come home. So I was like, great, Home Assistant can do it automatically. But yeah. you can't actually, the custom component doesn't let you change the state of the door. It just reads. So it's kind of uh, useless. Okay. But the one thing I found is, um, which is more for fun, really. But um, I was like, in theory, there's a risk if we're out and the cats are outside and the lawnmower comes on, it could like cut their tail off or something. Run over <laughs> like your just cat. Yeah. Sleeping. Yeah. So I, so I had this thing. Jim where, for dinner. Yeah. So it's like, if the lawnmower is running and the cats come outside, it pauses the lawnmower. So it stops ah. for a bit and then it waits. And then when they come back in, it starts up again. So yeah. That yeah, was yeah. One of those ones that's really satisfying. I was like testing it, like chucking the cat outside, like get out. Stop being so lazy. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? I'm like, this is for you. <laughs> Human, stop annoying me. <laughs> that's yeah, right. That's right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's funny because I've always looked at those uh, the robot lawnmowers and I was like, ooh, I kind of want one. But you know what? It, it's to me, I like I, I it's it's kind of nice. It's like almost like nice exercise. The one thing I hate doing, which is actually even better exercise but I just despise doing it is shoveling the snow. And mm. it's like, like I know there's people with like that have like uh, heaters under their driveways and stuff. And that's like thousands of dollars and then like another more yeah. thousands of dollars in terms of power to run it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, uh, it's not, like I don't want to do that. And it's like, I just, I just need a thing to shovel for me because I just don't want to do it. The <laughs> shovel robot. Do you have that for a lot of the year there where you have to do that? No, is it like but I mean, consistent? I mean, when you get when you get a dumping, it can be, you know, uh, so and especially if it's wet snow, it's heavy rather than dry mm. snow, which is just kind of powders off and you know whatever. Um, but like, there, there's been times when you know I've gotten it's not it's not too bad here, and, and Toronto relatively is fairly south uh, compared yeah. to the rest of Canada, and uh, so so we don't we can't even complain too too much. But it's like you know when there's a dumping, I mean we've we've gotten you know just. In in a day or two, it's it's gotten to like you know my shins, um, which is just not pleasant. Is, yeah, is it impossible? Simple. No. Is it very good exercise? Yes. Do I want to do it? No. <laughs> yeah, we don't really have that issue. Thankfully, it doesn't snowed here for. It doesn't seem to snow here anymore. I guess it's global warming. Is, I guess it saves me having to shovel. Yeah. But um. But yeah, that does sound like hard work. It but rains a lot. <clears throat> it's you know what it's it's so weird because it's it's almost february and i think i think we've really this year i think we've only had like one time maybe twice when i've had to go out and shovel there there was you know i probably should have a couple more times but then i looked at the temperature <laughs> and i was like yeah it's in the plus a couple of days from now i don't care whatever yeah, yeah like right? i can drive over it the car will yeah <laughs> well ex- exactly right it's i got an suv anyway so <laughs> why not <laughs> so uh, i guess rather than spending money on expensive driveway heating you could just buy like a tractor or something like a really big car with <laughs> so that you can totally well so what uh, actually one of my neighbors he's uh he's actually got a um, atv like a like a four-wheeler uh like one of those little little four-wheel motorcycle things right uh atvs and he's got a little shovel on it and right. uh, and and th- you actually get those kits uh to to put it on there and uh 
you know, when there's uh, the last big snowfall we had a few weeks ago, he he just kind of drove around the community and just, I think when he got to me, I think I was like the 10th house or something he had done. And it just takes him like five minutes, right? Just shovel, 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 move it to the side and all right, see ya, have a good day. And like, just. That's amazing. He's yeah. like a neighborhood and, hero. <laughs> oh, totally. And, and he, and he loves doing it. Right. And, uh, and you know, it's super nice guy, whatever. And it gets bad too. Sometimes a few years ago, like, cause snow shovel truck, we're, we're way off tangent here. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so like the snow plows came in and, uh, what happens is cause they shovel and they'll put down salt, right. To melt the ice. Mm. And, uh, but eventually, you know, if you, so I, I was traveling at that time for the week, I came back and I had this giant hump of ice in front of my driveway, which, you know, I took a shovel to it. I took whatever. It was just so thick. Right. And and I just couldn't ice. get rid of it. Yeah. And, and literally this guy came <laughs> in with his ATV and his shovel and he just pounded through it and like just literally just <laughs> drove directly through the ice. Love and it. yeah, it saved me about an hour's worth of work at least. And yeah, it was great. Genius. We've but, got yeah. crazy rain, crazy rain here lately. It's been it's raining a lot. And the other day I was in the bedroom and we have white noise on at night. Yeah. Through the Google home, like rain sounds. And I went up at like midday or something. Like you have showers at crazy times, right? When you have babies and they're off work. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, right, I'm going to go for a shower. And I was like, oh, the rain sounds on. I was like, okay, Google, stop. And it wasn't doing it. I was going to start talking now. I was like, okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, stop. And I was like, why isn't it working? And you know how angry you get, don't you, when it doesn't yeah. do what yeah. you want? And then I was like, oh. And then I realized it's, it was just actually it's actual raining. Rain. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. Disaster. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> So la- last thing just about your about your home and, and home automation, things like that. In terms of, of presence, are you mm. I know I know you mentioned, you know, you guys are I think you said you guys just had another kid, you guys get a lot of time off. So outside of that, what kind of presence detection and stuff do you guys do or do you do any? Yeah, so we've both o- got other than your cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cat presence. <laughs> dog doesn't have any presence yet we've got um we've both got the home assistant app on our phones and we found okay so for quite a long time when we were on android we had uh the google maps mm-hmm. integration mm-hmm. which worked really well and is really fast i just kind of started to lose faith with all the whole privacy stuff yeah. that's been going on and all the antitrust just all of that stuff around google and facebook and things i was kind of like oh i'd kind of like to get off this because you have to have location history switched on yeah with google to do that and so i was like right i'll give the companion app a go now it's on android and the ios one's pretty good and it seems to work pretty much perfectly i reckon maybe the google maps one is slightly faster to react but we don't have anything i haven't got like an alarm or anything or not not like a proper alarm with sirens and stuff that it would matter um so it seems fast enough okay yeah, I like the present stuff. Um, we, we You can do other things with it. But, so we don't just have like home or away. We have like, where are we? So then it can throw in things like uh, there's a Google travel time sensor that tells yeah. you how many minutes you are away by car. So we do things like if I'm 10 minutes away and my direction is towards home with the proximity, then put the heating on rather than just waiting for me to get home. A bit like the nests do. When, yeah. So yeah, we, we've we used the, prox- the, the sort of, person tracking stuff quite a bit it's quite useful nice okay what are you guys are you guys on the apps for that oh phil you use the wi-fi right the router yeah wi-fi as soon as you connect to wi-fi that's at your home right yeah yeah i i I use the home assistant app as well so i've got i've got zones set up for uh my house um i i primarily work from home but i have my office set up anyways but just in case i'm ever there and you know obviously now nowadays i'm not but uh, and then same with uh, my girlfriend for her uh, for her work as well, right? We've got I've just got that set up as thing. Again, she also right now especially works from home, but so that way it's I can do things. I, I don't have any automations around it just because we haven't really gone to our office <laughs> yeah. in a very long time. So, um, but the, but the intent was exactly the same kind of thing, right? It's like okay, you're leaving work. I can see you. I'm you know on the highway coming you know eastbound, whatever. Based on that, okay, go turn on the heat if if I need to, right, or pre preheat the house or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but but I haven't done any of that. But yeah, for for presence, I primarily use use that. I used to have a Zigbee presence sensor in the car, um, which physically broke. So I was like, okay, 
that's not that's not that's <laughs> not, not gonna a thing anymore. Any. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So now I just I just just rely on that. Yeah. But and I have the, use... I have the car as well because my car itself is smart enough to be in home assistant. So yeah. as there's like a GPS yeah. sensor, like where the car is exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, exactly. That's so cool. for it, it just it just pulls from the cloud and just says, okay, based on this, you're here. Right, so yeah. it's yeah. kind of it's kind of neat. I've got zones set up for like the in laws, so if you know we're all at the at my in laws' house, then it'll activate like vacation mode. Mm-hmm. Um, that way, you know the house goes. Oh, you're not coming home for a while, so that's it, shut down completely. Otherwise, um, I think it might be cool like to do uh, like a grocery store zone. You know, so if we're at the grocery store, yeah. then it can mm. pull grocery and say, all right, you need some milk. Right, buy some milk while you're here, sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, there's loads you could do with that, isn't there? Yeah. So I, I I like the I like the app for that, um, especially over a presence sensor or or even like the Wi-Fi integration or anything like that, just because otherwise it, it's a little more or it's a little less binary. It's it's a little less yeah. your home or not home. Right. A little, more resolution to say, hey, you are at this spot. Right. And based yeah. on that, do X, Y, Z. And there's so much data in the apps now as well with like mm-hmm. whether you're driving or moving or there seems mm-hmm. to be, and the Android one seems to have almost overtaken the iOS one with like all of that stuff coming in as well. Now there's so much in there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then we just use like loads of input Boolean. So we've got like a house occupied, like a master input Boolean that is the house yes. occupied. So it feeds that and we can always override that. And then there's yeah. a guest mode, which again, if we're in guest mode, then both our phones are away the house still stays occupied okay and it puts the guest room heating on and stuff like that and then there's night night mode night mode is probably one of my favorite automations actually because you hit night mode and it's like all the lights go off downstairs but it gives you a bit of like three minutes to get upstairs um yeah all all the scenes switch downstairs so if we come downstairs in the night to get like a milk bottle or something the lights come on red and really dim yeah the oh that's awesome down- the heating downstairs goes off the heating in our bedroom comes on the lights in our bedroom come on you know every like i swear every few weeks you add something to the night mode um (laughs) yeah um we've got the ring chime we kind of want to we switch off during the evening Mm -hmm. so you can't control it with home assistant but we've just plugged the chime into a smart plug so you can just cut the power to the chime and then and then when babies are sleeping because it was constantly waking them up so you just say, well, in the evening or at nap time, cut the power to the chime and then it doesn't wake them up. Interesting. But then at night we switch it back on because we're like, well, it's kind of like an alarm if someone's at the front yeah. door and it's the middle mm. of the night. So, and then it arms the cameras, it switches the TV off. Like it just, I love that night mode. You like hit this switch and you're like, this is the power. Yeah, <laughs> Everything yeah, yeah, is happening. Yeah. And you look at your log book and you're like, when you pressed it, it's like like a hundred automations. Everything can like fire, fire off. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, the Amazon Echo, like a routine set up. And so as soon as we just tell her good night, she'll go in and that'll trigger a home assistant script. It yeah. goes in and turns everything off, right? Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, we used to have it, like put the house to bed or something, yeah. Yeah, it's it, I, so I've I've learned that so anytime so normally my girlfriend would just go to bed before me right and I'll just be sitting there watching TV whatever but then every time she's just like just because it's easier because we have two two table lamps in in the bedroom so instead of saying you know turn off Rohan's light and turn off her light whatever she'll just say good night which then turns everything off so now yeah. I've actually got a, <laughs> got an automation to see if the TV is on and based on that if the TV is on then leave the living room light on. <laughs> <laughs> and like and, override her <laughs> yeah 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 and then and then uh, once and then i'll just turn off the tv and then i'll say good night and then that'll just turn that one light off and then it's uh it, do that and and it's funny actually last night i was telling her i'm like okay i think i know what uh what i want to do next and she's started rolling her eyes and i was like <laughs> i want to lift up the bed and she's like oh god <laughs> and and, uh, and i want to put sensors under it and she's like you're an idiot <laughs> just like, <"All> right. <laughs> Because uh, so, that that yeah. way I can tell, you know, if if uh, like bed presence, right? Are you in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to do that. I wish there would be a, you know, like a Xiaomi bed sensor, or just something really easy that I could just buy and stick under. Like it always seems like more. Either you have to buy a really expensive like cloud based one, or you have to do like an ESP, which doesn't look that hard. I know people guests have spoken about it, but yeah, I've never just kind of bothered. Yeah, and and that that's. 
probably the route I'm taking too, right? Is is get an ESP and uh, and and do it that way. And yeah, they look they look pretty they look pretty decent, right? You you just need uh, what are those things called? Uh, they're like load sensors or some of that, and and like yeah, pressure yeah. sensor. Yeah, you can so. get ones on the front doormat, can't you? From like care homes and dementia and stuff that detect yeah. people leaving. Yeah, the house. And, and base, James, and, who's also in the UK, he's done like um, bed presents for his daughter. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, so we, we, we've like had a few people on actually that have that have done it, mm. and you know it's it's one of those things where I actually saw it on uh, uh, with uh, self hosted home it has has an article on you know here's how I did it blah 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 and and you know I was like okay this is kind of cool I think I think I want to do this and this is this is what I do with my nights now because you know. <laughs> this is my life and uh so you know i think i think you know that might be kind of interesting too right and to do something like it that. just all makes it a bit smarter doesn't it we had a issue with night mode so we used to have it so that at midnight night mode is triggered even if even if you haven't mm. triggered it as like a backup if you forget and then we and it was fine and then we had our friends around for new year because again having oh, young kids no. we generally go to bed before midnight um yeah and then we had our friends around for new year uh last year like just pre-covid and we were sat there and it was like um you know i don't think there's a guy jules holland in the uk that basically if you're at home that's what you watch on tv and he has a big party on tv and it was like we were all stood there us and our friends and it was like 10 9 8 3 (laughs) 2 1 and everyone and all the lights went off (laughs) and the tv and I was like, oh, at least the home assistant time is accurate. That's right. Yeah, that's, just like, <laughs> that's how you know. Everyone was like, what? What happened? It was almost like I planned it. So we changed that. Now it happens at like 3 a.m. And it sends in. I've never actually seen it. I set this automation up and it goes on the TV. It's like the TV is or the house is going to go into night mode in 10 minutes. Yeah. And then it's like in one mm. minute, the house will go into. And I've never actually seen it happen because I didn't really test it, but. I, I, I am that happens. <laughs> I, I actually do it like a certain time before sunrise, right? And that way there's there's just a bit of randomness in there too. And yeah, you know, for, for security, for, for whatever whatever you want to call it, right? Um I think for me it's just peace of mind more than anything else. But yeah, it's same same deal, right? Do you have randomness when you're away or on holiday? Do you have yes. stuff happening with lights? It, it's it's actually the same same good night automation that I that I have where you know if if nobody is home it'll run good night at whatever minus i don't know whatever arbitrary time i put like six hours or or whatever right before before sunrise yeah. and that that way that gives me a little bit of entropy i guess not not that much um and i i've actually seen ones i don't i forget if i put it in my thing but i in my config but where you can actually generate a random number uh, between zero and 59 for the minute right so, so it takes so just just to add a little more randomness in there, yeah. Um, so, but are and, you randomly turning lights on for during when you if you're away? So, so I'm, I'm guessing the good night script would then turn everything off. Yeah. So I mean, I th- that's just my standard script. So uh, 45 minutes before sunrise, all my lights turn on anyways, um, and right. and everything is LED and everything. So it's like from a power usage perspective, it's very minimal. So I just keep that scene on, um, and then afterwards it'll it's just it's just a matter of when i turn it off really is what it is yeah yeah we have a similar thing we have night mode comes on at a random time between like 10 p.m and midnight yeah and then and then we have our motion i basically run the motion sensor automation so like i run yep. whole motion detected like once an hour at a random time but Be- i think bedroom it's all these things you do and then you never actually test them because you're not home <laughs> to try yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows if it works it probably doesn't even do it but um <laughs> That's what I've, I've aimed to do. Well, it's it's funny because I, I had to, t- to test my automation. I had to, uh, and this is way pre-COVID is when we were still traveling and everything, is uh, I was, I was I think we went to a, I forget what it was, like a cottage or something like that. And, uh, and you know, I'd, I'd be pulling out my phone and everybody's, you know, having, hanging out and like having beers or whatever, drinking, whatever. And, and I'm sitting there on my phone being like, did it turn off? Did it turn <laughs> on? Like, like looking at the states on, 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 uh, home assistant, right? And, uh, people are like, man, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, yeah, just five, five minutes, five minutes. I'll, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. It's like, <laughs> It's and, such a uh, smart home. You have to spend your holiday looking at your phone. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, it, it's it's funny. It's, it's the irony, right? So yeah, same. But yeah, cool. All right. Well, Liam, thank you so much for 
coming on um, and sharing your journey. Like clearly you've got a lot of like cool ideas. You've done so many like great things and yeah. How can, uh, sorry, have you got your config posts anywhere or are you sharing anything on Reddit or anything? I haven't yet. I do the odd Reddit post and I do plan to put this jukebox on. So I'll, um, I'll awesome. share my, um, my Reddit for the show notes and, yeah. um, and Perfect. yeah, that's probably the way. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks a ton, Liam. Cheers. Cheers. It's been fun. For sure. If you want to share your home assistant journey or come on as a guest, reach out to us at feedback at haspodcast.io. That's H-A-S-S podcast.io. The Home Assistant Podcast is hosted by Phil Hawthorne and myself, Rohan Karamandi. For links to topics that we discussed today, check out our show notes on haspodcast.io.